Hi, I'm Robin, and I'm happy to be here with you, Rick, today to talk about resilience. Resilience. This is one of my favorite words, Robin, because of how much I value working towards it and supporting others' development of it. Robin, what comes to mind when you hear the word resilience? What do you think of? So I think of resilience as the ability to recover from a stressor. But one of the important things about resilience is that it's a learned set of skills, and it can help us build balance in our professional and personal lives. Robin, what do you think is a common misconception about resilience as a personal or what the literature often refers to as a transferable skill? This is important. I think a common misconception is that there are more resilient and less resilient people, and that's fixed. Mm -hmm. While resilience skills and tools might be easier for some people to learn and easier to apply in some situations, we can all continually learn new ways of recovery and resilience that work for us. And resilience is in our control. The Merriam-Webster definition of resilience is an ability to recover from or adjust easily to misfortune or change. But let's unpack this definition a bit to make it more practical as a transferable skill so that people can use it in their day-to-day -day personal and professional activities. I see that there are two major components of this definition, recover and change. So Rick, I know you frequently talk about the concept of resilience in your field of fisheries and wildlife. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yes, when I think of resilience, I can't help but think of how dynamic or ever-changing forest ecosystems are to natural disturbances like wildfire, storms, or heavy feeding or browsing by large groups of deer or elk, and the concept of the historical range of variability as discussed by Morgan et al. in their 1994 paper. In this article, these researchers explain that forest ecosystems are ever-changing and recovering from natural disturbances. In forests, the recovery occurs as new plants or trees develop or new growth occurs following the disturbance. Over time, there is this oscillating pattern of change. If a disturbance is severe enough or intense enough, it will push the forest beyond either the upper boundaries of the historical range of variability or below it, in which the forest has the processes to recover. The important point to remember here is resilience is represented by the slope of that curve. It's the amount of time it takes the forest to recover from the disturbance. So let's take this historic range of variability model further and see how it might apply to people. While you talk about the natural disturbances of a forest ecosystem, similarly our personal ecosystems are also constantly changing and have disturbances that will influence our personal and professional lives. With this dynamic pattern, there will be stressors causing setbacks as well as the need to recover from those so we can maintain our health, happiness, and productivity. So a stressor might be an experiment that's not going well, or a field season with weather that's preventing you from collecting data. But then, of course, we know that stressors do not only come one at a time, as this simple model portrays. So while the experiment is not going well, you may also have a child that gets sick, an unexpected expenses, or not sleeping well yourself. You might have a PI who is not available. Perhaps they have a sick family member or a collaborator who is not pulling their weight. These stressors can add up. They can be cumulative and, in fact, can interact and, overall, impact our sense of personal well-being. So if we think about the historic range of variability graph from a human perspective, what variables could the y-axis represent? Think about what it has been for you. If you're looking at a specific stressor, the y-axis could be the time you have to concentrate on items on your list of to-do things. It could be training new lab technicians, the number of pages written weekly on a manuscript, the completion of components of a project, or some aspect of your health. Or if you look at the graph from a more holistic perspective, the y-axis might be your overall satisfaction with your work-life balance. Let's think about how we might define resilience when thinking about it in the context of your life. We define resilience as a set of skills and habits that prepare us to better cope with, adapt to, and recover from personal and professional challenges. In other words, it's what we do before, during, and after a challenge. So why are we dedicating an entire module of this MOOC on professional development for postdocs to this single issue? Because we believe that the skills associated with resilience are the ones that we all need to be aware of and develop, regardless if we're working in academia, industry, in an agency, or for a nonprofit. No one can work effectively 24-7. Everyone needs mental and physical recharges as they move through their personal and professional lives. And we all have, and should have, other responsibilities and interests beyond our work. And there is resilience literature that is scientifically based and opinion pieces that recommend tools and strategies that work for some people. We've already mentioned some of this literature early in the module. 
In this module, we'll discuss some of the literature and try to interpret it so that you can use it or adapt it to make strategic decisions to help you develop effective and sustainable work-life habits. So the goal for this week is to provide you with some tools and strategies to build resilience. It won't happen overnight, and it will take some practice. If we think about what this might look like on the historic range of variability model, we hope that your oscillations become smaller and the slope steeper as you respond faster.